cardiology update viewers, readers, and listeners. My name is Shadi Reyes. I'm interventional cardiologist and director of the cath lab at Detroit Medical Center in Detroit, Michigan, United States. I'm really privileged to come to you with a great science that came from the American College of Cardiology 2024 that was in Atlanta two days ago. This is a great meeting, has a lot of prevention as well as interventional and heart failure therapy that came along. So stay tuned with me. We're going to go quickly through one of the top picks for ACC 2024. Let's start with some pharmacology. The first trial that uh, got my attention is the IMPACT MI. The IMPACT MI looked at the efficacy of IMPACT Liflozin, SGLT2 inhibitor, and the impact of this therapy on a patient who had recent MI. So these patients were randomized to receive placebo or IMPACT Liflozin without heart failure and looked at the uh, adverse cardiac events or any cardiac events uh, after the end of the follow-up. And the, at the end of the conclusion of the study, there was no difference or no statistical difference between uh, two groups who received placebo or embacliflozin. What I summarized from this trial is that embacliflozin for patients who have no heart failure but recent MI show no benefit. Maybe we need a longer follow-up and more population, but stay tuned. But for the time being, embacliflozin for MI is doesn't show any benefit. The second trial is also looking at prevention. It's called the BALANCE, uh, evaluated the olizarsen, which is a medication to lower the triglyceride. This is a patient who has hypertriglyceridemia, and they tested the group at a low and high dose. And they showed that there is a reduction in the level of triglyceride at a higher dose, but not at a lower dose. With the same medication, which is uh, olizarsen, uh, they started another trial called bridge timi 73 in this study, they compared the placebo or to compare to uh, triglyceride in moderate and severe triglyceridemia. And in this trial, they showed that there is a drop in the triglyceride is higher with the higher dose and then a little bit lower with the lower dose. Again, showing another new therapy for patients with hypertriglyceridemia and also with especially with history of cardiovascular events. Moving along to some structural studies is a SMART trial. SMART trial looking and evaluated the, the TAVI in patient with small annulus. We know this is a small annulus population can be challenging and can cause um, kind of mismatch for patient uh, uh, receiving uh, TAVR. So in this uh, study, they compared two uh, uh, TAVI uh, procedure, which is uh, self-expanding and balloon expanding or supraannular implantation of self-expanding valve compared to balloon expanding valve. And interesting finding that there was no difference between these two valves, whether you do bioprosthetic valve or you uh, uh, self-expanding or balloon expanding, there is no difference in small annulus population. However, durability of bioprosthetic valve and function was better in the bio, in the self-expanding valve. Moving on again also uh, to one of the interesting uh, medication that is uh, semaglutide that has been getting a lot of attention recently for diabetes and weight loss and what so other stuff. So a step hefpef DM. This is a patient who have hefpef and diabetes and obesity who receive a semaglutide compared to standard of care therapy. In this population it showed that this patient has a lower KCCQ score compared to placebo as well as shortness of breath and heart failure symptoms. Again, this population also who receives semaglutide has lower uh, weight and in decrease in weight over the, over the course of the follow-up. Another a very interesting indication as well as uh, angle to use semaglutide in this population who has HFPEF, diabetes, and obesity. Uh, moving to a very interesting trial, which is I think got a lot of attention, which is the Dan Shock trial. This is a patient who presented with uh, MI and received randomized to receive um, um, Ampella, which is um, a microaxial uh, flow uh, pump for evaluate for kind of offloading of the LV, and those who did not receive the Ampella. So these patients were came with MI and were randomized to receive Ampilla CP versus no Ampilla CP. And at the end of the follow-up, which is at 880 days, which is all cause mortality, myocardial infarction, bleeding, complication, it showed that patient who receive Ampilla has a lower endpoint uh, adverse events compared to patient who did not receive Ampilla. And the vascular complication is was higher, obviously, but it wasn't significant or driven, has any driven uh, cause for mortality or complication. Very interesting, the p-value was 0.04. A very interesting study. Again, it was published in New England Journal of Medicine. I'm really excited to, uh, I, I would like you to refer to it and uh, study it uh, extensively. That might be a changing the practice going forward for patients coming with acute myocardial infarction who receive Ampilla. 
Moving along to also another heart failure trial, which is the uh, relief heart failure. This is a very interesting concept. This is, uh, they study the safety of that transatrial shunt created in a, by device that opened between the right atrium and left atrium for patient with heart failure. Uh, uh, they, the population included were HEF-PEF patients as well as HEF-REF patients. Interesting result that uh, HEF-PEF patients have no benefit and HEF-REF patient has uh, the most benefit uh, when it's used in certain population as well as certain indication. Another venue for patient with advanced heart failure who's on the bridge to LVAD or bridge to transplant to relieve symptoms in patient with HEF-REF but not in HEF-PEF. Uh, moving along to another trial, which is the uh, TAC-2 trial. This is looking at the chelation therapy in patients who uh, have cardiac events in the past, as well as diabetes and prior MI, and they were uh, randomized to, to placebo. And it showed that chelation therapy, again, part of the TAC-2 trial, uh, showed that there's lower events in the uh, patient and who re received yeah, chelating agents compared to placebo. One very interesting also study is, which is I think that's going to be changing the way we practice is uh, the reduced sweetheart. As we know, beta blocker has been uh, one of the cornerstones for the therapy for patient with heart failure. However, a post-MI patient with normal ejection fraction, we still use beta blocker, but we don't have enough evidence. Here you go, reduced sweetheart trial came to study the impact of beta blocker especially metoprolol and bisoprolol because, because this study was done at Europe, uh, looking, comparing the patient who received beta blocker compared to those who received placebo after myocardial infarction. Interesting finding, the finding that between the two, two groups were no difference. So whether the patient received beta blocker after MI or not, there's no difference. Again, this is patient who had MI with normal ejection fraction and not heart failure. Uh, something I think will change pr our practice. I'm, I'm really, uh, now we have a, a good answer for what we do. And I think this is uh, going forward. I don't think there's a good evidence to continue with beta blocker post MI if the heart pump is normal. Ultimate depth is another uh, post MI trial. This is where they compare the monotherapy with ticagalor after PCI compared to a dual antiplatelet therapy, which is aspirin and ticagalor. Uh, monotherapy was started right after PCI and patient received MI and they followed, uh, uh, they continued uh, this uh, medication for 12 months. Monotherapy was non-inferior to dual antiplatelet therapy at the end of the follow-up with no reduction of, with no uh, increased bleeding and also uh, with, uh, with lower bleeding in the monotherapy with Acaglor compared to DAPT as well as same events compared to the DAPT. This is very interesting findings and also especially for patients with high risk uh, bleeding population. I think uh, monotherapy is sufficient and I think can do the job as I mentioned here because there's no adverse event, ischemic event and the bleeding is much lower. The dedicate trial is also another study that compared the outcome of uh, TAVI uh, compared to SAVR in patients with low risk. Again, TAVR was associated with a lower risk of stroke, lower cardiovascular events, but there was some extravascular uh, complication in the uh, low risk population, but wasn't significant. Trial again, uh, PREVENT. This is a very interesting study. Uh, PREVENT is looking at and uh, performing a preventive PCI on no flow emitting met plaque. I think this is trial is going to be a little bit controversial, but it definitely tap into a very interesting population. Vulnerable plaque has been known that this is we because of the improvement and development in imaging and nurse imaging, uh, there is a lot of uh, identification of vulnerable plaque that we use to leave it alone, and uh, we kind of maximize preventive measure in this population. This trial in Korea and Southeast Asia, Asia, they looked into the doing preventive PCI in patients who have high risk features of vulnerable plaque. So there's no flow limiting. This is not a stenotic lesion, but this is a high risk plaque mani manifest uh, features that was seen on imaging. And these patients definitely received PCI compared to optimal medical therapy alone. And the findings are very interesting. At two years finding, the findings suggest preventive PCI has reduced major adverse cardiac event, including MI and uh, risk of death from myocardial infarction. And there was, in terms of complications, such as uh, target visual revascularization or preprocedural MI was very negligible with a rate of 0.4%. Again, this is a very interesting. It, I think it's gonna take a while to incorporate this practice in our guidelines. And I think require a lot of training to see kind of one of the most advanced imaging tools, how to read it, how to interpret before we implement this in current practice. Final and last but not least is the Orbita Cosmic Trial. 
Our base health spectrometer aims to evaluate the efficacy of a coronary sinus reducer. This is a device where it's placed in the coronary sinus, and this is the aim of this trial to reduce the episode of angina in patients with stable ischemic heart disease, as well as reduce the infarction or ischemia that was seen on non-invasive testing. The, at the end of the trial, the investigator found that there is a patient who received the coronary sinus occluder who has lower event of angina, but there was no change in the perfusion study compared to placebo. This is one extra uh, especially if somebody is very resistant, somebody, a patient that we see sometimes with very resistant and recurrent angina, I think this is, will be one of the population which we can use this device for. However, as I said, there is a perfusion defect, was no difference between the placebo, so in terms of ischemia burden is no difference, but angina relief was higher in patients who received this device. I hope you enjoyed the summary. Again, we might come up with another uh, video for you if there is more trials coming in uh, to cover these trials. But again, this is what the top picks for ACC, American College of Cardiology 2024 that just finished in Atlanta this last weekend. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please follow us on the social media platform, Instagram, YouTube, as well as LinkedIn and uh, Twitter, Facebook. And if you have any question, drop it in the comment. If there is a certain topic you would like to hear from us or a certain article, please let us know and we'll be happy to cover. Thanks again for watching us. This is Cardiology Update. I am Shadi Reyes from Detroit.